Hello guys, uh, so today we're gonna start a new tutorial list, um, so that's gonna be about Node.js. My plan is to build a REST API uh, by using a Node.js. So, um, <clears throat> so this uh, readme here is just to talk about what we're gonna make and what we're gonna use, uh, everything. So why do I make this tutorial? So I was searching for a long time to get like my own kind of Node.js boilerplate and I always feel like overwhelmed when, when I read uh, all the Node.js boilerplate I found because they have so much stuff and for a beginner like I was uh, not so long ago uh, I didn't feel really right using this so finally I decided to make my own Node.js boilerplate I'm gonna put a link inside the description and that was a really good experience uh, for learning and I want to share with you what I learned and everything and uh, For the one who came from the meetup app. I'm building with react native. Don't worry. I'm gonna make this two tutorial in parallel so uh, I create this tutorial for helping people to make their own REST API and I want maybe I want you to make it like maybe your own boilerplate so what I mean boilerplate it's we're gonna just set up basic stuff and you're gonna see like how the, the stuff go and after that you can just reuse it almost get clone your own repo and just start because we're gonna have authentication and all this kind of stuff so what are we gonna do it's a uh, we're gonna just make like a medium like website that's not gonna be a medium cloud but that, that's gonna be something looks like medium what i mean by that it's we're gonna have some a user authenticate and it can create a, a blog post and everyone can read the blog post but if you want to like like the blog post or uh, maybe like um, uh, write a comment something like that you're gonna need to be authenticated we're gonna use GWT for this one and we're gonna set up that with passport GS and uh, with the local strategy after that user can create a post can delete it if it is on post and can update it after that a user can follow another one so kind of Twitter and everything. After that, you're gonna get the notification when the, uh, the user you're following gonna do a new post. After that, like a user can like a post and uh, user can see all the posts they like. So finally, we're gonna almost like bookmarking what you like. After that, the tech I want to use, it's all, so we're gonna use Node.js. We're gonna use MongoDB for the database. After that, we're gonna use ES6, ES7 feature and so for the one who came and our really beginner in javascript maybe you should read about promises and async await after that because i'm going to use a lot of async await i'm not going to use callback uh, i mean i'm the most i can i don't like callback so after that for the compile we're going to use babel so babel going to take the es6 es7 code and with the help of webpack version 2 we're going to make it uh, running on the Node.js uh, uh, server. So what are we gonna do for the part one? We're gonna set up of set up uh, the tool. So uh, finally, we're gonna uh, set up uh, editor config, Express, ESLint, Babel, and Webpack 2. So when we finish this tutorial, so this first part, we're gonna add a simple Express server running, nothing more. This is just for the setup, and we have a lot of setup to do so. So time to start. So the first thing I'm gonna show you, uh, we're gonna do it's uh, finally create a, a new folder. So I just create this folder, and nothing is there already, almost. Just the getting now inside the folder. I just put a getting now. I want to, I don't want to send my node module in, and I just create this readme. So you can create a new folder. After that, I'm using yarn. You can use npm. This is almost the same. So I'm gonna do yarn in it. So I'm gonna just uh, click uh, enter for each, so for everything. I, so that's gonna give me a package JSON. For the one who don't know what is a package JSON, it just a file. It just a file to manage all the npm package we're gonna use, and that can be used for adding script and everything. So after that, what I want to do is we're gonna start right with Express. So I'm gonna add Express. So Express is done. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a folder called source and I'm gonna create an index.js file. At the top, 
uh, what's happening here? I don't know. At the top, I'm gonna import Express from Express. Yes, yes, uh, and yes, six, yes. The import here, for the one who know, import don't work with the node. So we need to use Babel for that. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna just create an, ex an ex extends of Express. I'm gonna just do const port equal process then env that port or 3000 so finally when we push to maybe like a Roku, something like that they're going to use this uh, environment variable so that's why we make it like that after that really easy add that listen we pass the port and we get a callback uh, of error and here what we can do is if we have an error i'm going to just uh, throw it else i'm going to console log oops not this console log. I'm gonna console log with backtip. So with backtip, I can use string interpolation and I'm gonna say server running on port. So that's gonna be 3000. And because I use backtip, I can use multi-line. So here I'm gonna say, uh, and uh, running on process that ends then node env. Oops node env like that and i'm gonna just say something really simple nothing crazy just a little uh, message for motivate you make something great nothing more perfect now what i'm gonna do i don't know what happening here oh i know why because i have something here running i'm so sorry guys perfect so now what I'm going to do, it's uh, I'm going to run, I'm going to create a package JSON script. So I'm going to say script, I'm going to say dev, so in development, and I want to use node env to make an environment variable. Because I know some of you are going to use um, Windows, node env is not uh, for free for you. So that's why we're going to add cross env. It's a really simple package to add. The only thing you need to do is add cross env at the top here. So here finally we say we want to use inside development. Node gonna start with the source folder inside index. Now if I run yarn dev. Oh, unexpected token import. Yes, so this is what happening. Node don't understand this line of code. Now, right now he understand everything else, but he don't understand import. So how can we make it working? We're gonna use a tool called Babel. So uh, for um, set up Babel, what we're gonna do is we need to install some package. So inside dev dependency, we're gonna install Babel core, Babel loader. Uh, yeah, so finally we're gonna install Babel preset env, Babel plugin transform uh, object rest spread and I make a typo this is rest so finally we're gonna uh, add these two things so Babel preset env it just a uh, uh, preset will help you to just they give you what you need so before we use like Babel preset ES 2015 Babel preset react and everything but now with Babel preset env we can now set up the Babel just we just need one thing finally. So here inside the root, now we're gonna create a Babel RC file. So this is where we're gonna say to Babel what we want. Curly bracket here, preset. We pass here uh, an array of another uh, square bracket here, and we're gonna say env for environment. Uh, yeah, environment like that. And now we, uh, so the array take two arguments here. And here we're gonna say target. And we're gonna say inside that curly bracket, node. So we're gonna target node and we target the curve version of node. After that, after the preset here, we're gonna add plugins. And we're gonna add the plugin uh, we uh, install. So transform object res spread. What is this plugin? I want to use the tree dot, the magical tree dot, the rest and the spread operator. That's why I just love it. I mean, so here I'm going to use use build 
int, yeah, like that, and we're gonna say true. Perfect. But now what I need to do, Babel cannot run like that. So that's why I, we can use Babel. I mean, I can show you the both way if you want, but I'm gonna use Webpack too because I love it. I mean, I use it on the front end. Why don't use it in the back end too? So for Webpack, the thing we need to add inside Dev Dependency, it's Webpack. And after that, we're gonna need to add Babel Core and Babel Loader. Why Babel Core? Because if we don't add it, that's gonna be a dependency, like we need this dependency for running Babel Loader. And after that, I'm gonna add another package, Webpack Node External. Perfect, so now everything is set up. As you can see, I skip now. So I learned from other tutorial. Now I skip the installation. I don't want to lose time. So here, now time to create a webpack that config.js. So here, the webpack, it's not, it's gonna be like the one in the front end, but now we need to use uh, some other stuff. So here at the top, so this is the only place where we're gonna need the ES5. So node external, gonna be equal to require, and here I'm gonna add the webpack node external. After that, I'm gonna say cunt path equal require, Fat and we don't need to install it. This is coming from this is coming in with Node.js. After that, module that export. We're gonna export an object here. We're gonna say target. We target node. If you target the front end, you're gonna do web. So target node. After that, I'm gonna say external and I'm gonna put an array and I'm gonna say node external and this is a function. After that, I'm gonna say an entry. So here we need an entry point. Here, what I'm gonna say index. So here is the name of the entry I want to give him. I'm gonna give it index. If I want, I can give him my name if I want. That's gonna be what Webpack gonna compile. This is the name here. So I'm gonna say, take it from the SRC, SRC index.js. After that, I'm gonna say output. So what we want uh, to do as at the finally, Webpack takes something and give you something. So this is the give you path. I'm gonna say path that join. I'm gonna say their name, so inside the root, and I'm gonna say create a this folder. After that, file name, uh, lower key. So now this is the place where you say, so this one is the folder where you want it, the path, and the file name it's which file, uh, like what you want Webpack to call it. That's gonna be easy. We're gonna say inside quote, curly bracket name. Where this name coming? Name is the variable of this thing here. So if I say Emmanuel, here that's gonna be the manual. But now I'm gonna say index. And I'm gonna say bundle the GS, but inside my quote, sorry. Like that. So now I'm gonna have an index that bundle that GS. After that, library target. So what we target. And here I'm gonna say common GS2. This is what Node.js want. See, this is what Node.js want, they require, but we want to use the import because it just looks better, so. Modules, after that. Here we're gonna set up a, a set of uh, rows. So that's gonna be an array. And here we're gonna have an object, and this is the only place where we're gonna have a rule, it's test. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna say some rejects here, and I'm gonna say, give me the JavaScript file. We want only the JavaScript file. We want to exclude after that. Exclude. We are gonna exclude, sorry for my phone. We're gonna exclude the, the node module. So node modules. So we don't want Webpack to compile node modules. We don't want that. And after that, I'm gonna say use. It's a quote, Babel loader. So this is the package we install. So Babel loader gonna find if we have some Babel preset, and we have, but we set up that in Babel. See why I do this? Because for me that's look just much more cleaner. I don't want to put that here. I want to keep it as clean as I can. Perfect. So now we have Webpack starting. So now inside the uh, package JSON, we're gonna need to uh, create a new script called dev that build. So this build here, what we're gonna do, 
it's gonna that's gonna be webpack dash w why w because we want webpack to watch we want webpack to every time he see a change to recreate himself like uh, not re recreate himself sorry that was a bad term i mean recreate finally your app so every time you're gonna make a change what i gonna take it and make it work for the node.js after that now the dev here we want to run on the babel or uh, uh, that this folder are gonna came so we are gonna have a, this but remember the name it's this that bundle bundle so now if i run example my yarn dev build so now webpack is watching the file And now I get an error. Did I install this thing? So I think I make a typo. So one second. Yeah, I do transform without the S. So as you can see, Wipeg already look here. But look now. Oh, we have a this folder index but that yes. We have all the webpack set up here. And after that, hmm. Express webpack require all this number here coming in from the node external. So var webpack here oh cons app equal and you see this is my code. So now this thing can run. So now if I run my uh, yarn dev, oh server running on port 3000 uh, and running on develop uh, development make something great. So now if I run, uh, go to local os local os 3000 I get cannot get it's normal but now if I do a change here example if I can a new line webpack gonna change yeah sorry webpack gonna compile but uh, we don't like we don't see the change because we need something to check for the change and so for the one who have used known one uh, no just in the past you know the package known mon. So we're gonna add known mon. So known mon gonna um, finally watch the change. So the only thing we need to do, go to package JSON, change node to be known mon now. So now my webpack still working, but now if I say uh, uh, yarn dev, I'm getting make something new and uh, make something great. Now, if for example, I say something great. Oh, you see, make something great now. It's coming in with the new change. So now I can say, and I get my change. Perfect. So now, which tool need to be installed? So we have installed Express, ES, Babel, and Webpack 2. Now two other tools I really love. Editor config. You use Visual Studio Code, simple. You use Atom, simple. You use Sublime, simple again. And that work too with WebStorm. Go to your extension. Plug in and everything, search for uh, editor config. So you're gonna see the little mouse right here. Install this stuff. After that, uh, for the one using Visual Studio Code here, editor config generator, it's perfect. This is what we want. Why? Because now what I can do is shift command P, editor config, generate editor config, boom. What I'm gonna get, editor config right there. What? This is fine. So finally, for the one who don't have the gener uh, generate, don't worry. I'm gonna have the repo in the GitHub, and you can just copy paste this stuff. So here, what I do is I say I want the index style to be space. Why do this? You work with a team of five developer, and you don't want people to use tab. You want them to use space, but they don't want to change their own editor by using this. Nothing need to be changed. Editor content gonna make it for, for you. So space, in the size of two, we want to trim the trailing white space. We don't want the white space. And we want to insert a new line at the end. Perfect, so now this one is working. After that, what? So I'm gonna close this, I'm gonna close that, I'm not gonna close this. So now, when I save example, you're gonna see when I save, boom, new line coming. I have some white space. You see, I have white space now here. If I say, oh, no white space, this is what do editor config. After that, I want to install ESLIN. This is our studio code, ESLIN. Boom, that's it. 
Adam, I think you need Linthar and Linthar Yeslin. I'm not sure. And I think for Sublime, you need Yeslin. So just check for what you need to set up that. But trust me, you're going to love it. You do Yarn, Add, Dash D, Yeslin. But you need some configuration. I have made my own and I love it. So I'm going to use it for my tutorial. You can use it. It's really easy. And But you can use the Airbnb and everything. I use the Airbnb, but I just modify it. So Yeslin, Config, Equimper. After that, when it's installing, what I'm going to do, now it's done. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a dot ESLint RC. Curly bracket, extend, equimper. Nothing more to do. After that, do command key, command W to close every windows and now reopen index.js. Oh, what is that? Oh, missing semicolon. You don't want to have a console. So what I say is, I, with my ESLint config, I say, here you have a console log. It's a, just a warning. When you see like that, it's just a warning. I say, maybe you don't want this example, you debug. So you don't want the console log to stay there. Here we want it because we're going to use for the server. But other places, you don't want to have a console log. Example, if you console log the password of the user, you don't want that to be run on your server. After that, I'm going to say, oh, you missed semicolon. If you use a Visual Studio Code, what you can add is ESLint auto fix on save. And now if I click command S, oh, semicolon coming in here. I remove semicolon, I remove semicolon here. I get red thing, boom, boom, save, everything coming in. Console log, what I do now, I don't like that. I say open, uh, create a new line here at the top. Do like this, so uh, one asterisk between two slash. ESLint, disable. But if you do this, you disable everything. So now if I do this, I don't get an error. So what you do, it's no console. So this thing gonna still work, but the console, no. So nothing I've changed in your build, but man, I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. So, and nothing you need to do more. So we have set up the basic tool to get started. So I hope you enjoy. Let me know in the, co in the comments if you like it. I mean, for the one who have already seen my tutorial, I would like to know if you like the new place I do and if you like me to like, uh, the change like I, I make so I mean I learned I'm not a youtuber by the I not so you see what I mean I, I need to learn so I hope you enjoy I'm gonna push that to uh, get them I'm gonna put the repo inside the description oh I'm gonna work with the repo I've learned from my uh, a mistake on the other one I'm gonna now make branch so the master gonna always be in the latest version but I'm gonna have now a, a branch called EP01 for episode 01 so for the one who come and want to see what happened at the end of this video, just look EP1. That's going to be the same for 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you're going to see at the place of what you're watching, what happening inside GetUp. So it's more easy for you to debug. So I hope you enjoy. Please subscribe. Share that if you, if you want. I mean, I will really appreciate it. So have a good night. Bye.